Hi boys and girls, I'm back again for another read aloud. This week I'm going to read Patricia Polacco's book. It's called My Rotten Red-Headed Older Brother. Do you have an older brother or sister that's always teasing you or always competing with you? Or maybe you're the older brother or sister that's always competing with your little brother or sister. Well, that's what this story is about. There's a brother and sister in this book, and the older brother's always teasing the little sister. Let's see how it turns out. Oh, let me, there's a lot of sun glare here on the book. All righty, let's see. There's the grandma, and in this story, she's called a babushka. Okay. My brother and our mother and I all lived with my grandparents on their farm in Union City, Michigan. Now my babushka, my grandmother, knew lots of things. She knew just how to tell a good story. She knew how to make ordinary things magical. And she knew how to make the best chocolate cake in Michigan. After she told my brother and me a grand tale from her homeland, we'd always ask, Bubby, is that true? She'd answer, of course it's true, but it may not have happened. And then she'd laugh. There he is teasing her, holding her doll. Now I knew that she loved me all right, but I couldn't quite understand how she could even like my older brother, Richard. He had orange hair that was like wire. He was covered in freckles and looked like a weasel with glasses. The one thing that my bubby didn't seem to know was how perfectly awful my brother really was. Mind you, he was always nice whenever she was around us, but as soon as she'd leave, he would do something terrible to me and laugh. Isn't that it, right? Whenever your parents are around, your brother and sister do something, and they never get caught, or so you think. There were so many things that I couldn't stand about him. The worst was that he was always telling me he could do just about everything better than me. Bet I can pick more blackberries than you, he jeered at me one day. No, you can't. Can so, cannot, can, he whispered. Not, I said louder, can, he whispered so low that I could hardly hear him. Does that sound familiar? Not, I screamed back. Somebody always has to have the last word, don't they? <laughs> there they are, picking blueberries. We both picked berries for most of the afternoon. Well, he upped and did it. He not only picked more berries than I, he set a record that wasn't even challenged for the next 10 years. You make me sick, Richard Barber, I yelled at him. And then he smiled that smile that only a rotten redheaded older brother could smile. She's not too happy that he beat her. I guess I would have to face it. He could run faster, climb the highest, throw the farthest, sit the longest, get the dirtiest, burp the loudest, and spit the farthest. He had no equal, certainly not me, and I'm four, year old, four years older than you, always have been, and always will be, he sneered. There had to be something, something I could do that he couldn't. Then an inspired thought comforted me like a fresh breeze on a hot summer day. Oh, Richie, I cooed as I stood next to the rhubarb bushes. Do you like rhubarb? No, he said. It's the sourest stuff on the planet. Now I knew at long last that I had him. Bet I can eat more of this raw rhubarb than you without getting the pukers I challenged. I don't think so. I do. I don't, he said, narrowing his eyes. I do, I hissed. Don't, he hissed, looking smug. Do, I said furiously as I grabbed the first stalk and started chewing it down almost to the leaf. When I couldn't get one more sour bite into my mouth, he was still eating with relish. I thought you said you don't like rhubarb, I said through the pursed lips. I don't like it. I love it, <laughs> he announced as he popped the last stalk into his mouth. Again, he won. I was so mad I couldn't even feel how my belly was starting to ache. 
I can't stand you, Richard Barber. I double dog can't stand you, I screamed as I went into the house to be consoled by my grandmother. Yeah, and I'm four years older than you, too. You little twerp, always have been and always will be, he called after me. And then he laughed, that rotten, red-headed, older brother laugh. Sounds like a brother and sister fight to me. That night at dinner, I could hardly eat. Have you been eating angry apples again, child? Bubby asked as she sliced me a huge web of rhubarb pie. I baked your favorite. Richard gave me one of his extra rotten, weasel-eyed, greeny-tooth grinned, grins. Her stomach's sick from eating all that rhubarb. At bedtime, my bubby came and sat on the edge of my bed like she did every night. Look, a falling star, she said. We watched it streak across the sky, and then she spit twice between her fingers and gave her chest a loud slap. Why did you do that, bubby, I asked. I was making a wish. Didn't you know that wishes on falling stars come true? At last I knew how I was going to get back at my brother. For the longest time I watched the dark sky until I saw a star shoot across the night. And then I spit between my two fingers and slapped my chest. I was done. My wish was to do something, anything better than my brother. I'd show him. I wonder what she wished. She wished that she could do anything better than her brother. <clears throat> Let's see if it comes true. The next morning, all I could think about was my wish. I was thinking about it so hard, I almost didn't notice the wagons and the trucks pulling into the field down the road near the four corners. A traveling carnival, my brother shouted as he ran toward me. They're setting up right here in our field. Bet I can eat more hot dogs than you can, he teased. He was already starting it. But this time I was going to do something so incredible that even he would have to sit up and take notice. I had a star wish. I'd show my rotten red-headed older brother all right. Hmm. That night I ran straight for the merry-go-round. We must have taken 50 turns on that carousel. But then my brother got off. I stayed on. I went around and around and around. What do you think happened to her? What happens when you keep going around and around and around? I knew I could do this longer than you. I shouted to my brother, feeling proud, but just a bit dizzy. Trisha, I heard my bubby call out. Get off from that thing. It's time to go home. Oh no, what happened? The last thing I remembered was stepping off from the platform. Next thing I knew, I woke up with Bubby sitting on the edge of my bed. Mom and Grandpa were there, too. You gave us a fright, Mama said. How do you feel? What happened, I asked. You fell, my rotten red-headed older brother announced with the biggest grin on his face. I don't know what we would have done, my Bubby said softly. Your brother carried you all the way home, and then he had to run to get Dr. Lee. So apparently... She got so dizzy that when she got off the merry-go-round, she fell. You had to have stitches. I watched it all, he said excitedly, her brother. You fell off the merry-go-round right into some pop bottles at soda, my gramps added. You even passed out, my brother chirped. Looks like you finally did something special. <laughs> it was from that exact moment that our relationship changed somehow. Thanks, Richie, I said to him. What's a big brother for anyway, he said, blushing. So, wasn't that nice of her brother? When she fell into the soda bottles, he carried her all the way home and, and got the doctor. She had those stitches. <clears throat> that night, we were all out in our front yard on a hot Michigan night. It was my family's custom to sleep outside where it was cool. Look at those stars, Bubby said quietly. Wishes are funny, aren't they, I said. Sometimes they come true differently than you think they will. That's why you have to be very careful what you wish for. Just may come true, Bubby said. And then she squeezed both our hands. Hang on to the grass, she whispered. Why, Bub? my brother asked. Because if we don't, we might float up into the stars. And then she leaned over and kissed us both three times. I kissed your eyes. 
and I hold on to both your hearts in my good keeping. And this night I thank God that I walk the earth with both of you. Amen. There they are sleeping outside. Do you ever sleep outside in the summer when it's hot out? Then we all just laid on our blankets in the gentle summer night. I always, I'll always, i always be four years older than you, though, my brother whispered softly, and then he smiled. All of us held one another's hands, and then we all drifted off to sleep. So even the brother and sister thought they were still friends, and he helped her out when she fell and got stitches from merry-go-round. He was still her older brother, and they were good friends. So I know even though you might fight sometimes with your brothers and sisters, you also have good times and fun times where you get along and play together. And that's what we need to do. I know, especially as you get older, you turn into good friends. I know I'm good friends with my brothers and sisters, but I know when we were younger, we fought a lot too. I hope uh, you're having a good time at home with your brothers and sisters and not fighting too much. Uh, try and get along and do your work on Odyssey and try and get on to the Related Arts uh, Google Classroom. Miss KK's on there. She's got some fun art things. The gym teacher's on there, music teacher and myself. We have all fun activities for you to do. So I try and sign up. I sent you all invites. And there's 150 of you on there so far. Um, it's just fun stuff. No worries, no grades, just fun things for you to do if you're missing art, gym, library, and music. Uh, have a fun time. Have a good weekend. And I'll see you next week with another story. Bye-bye.